Hey everyone, it's Zueb Khan here and I'm a senior front-end engineer. This is the part 3 or in fact the last part of the YouTube style uh, sidebar that I was creating in Angular Material. So in this part, we're going to add all of the animations and you can see we already have our pretty functioning sidebar here. It collapses to the state, but it doesn't have those nice animations that the original sidebar that I showed you had. What we need to do here is to add some CSS transitions because all of the properties in fact, we made sure that all of the properties that we are changing here were basically using CSS properties. So if you, for example, go in our app.component here and you can see that the style.width was changed or the style.margin left was changed. So all of these are CSS properties and CSS transitions can be used to animate these properties in the fastest way possible. So how to add CSS transitions? Let's see how. So at this level, at the top level, when we have the mat side nav and the mat side nav content, we need to animate the width and the margin left. So we can see simply target the mat side nav and the mat side nav content and add a transition here. So we're going to say all here uh, just to be quick and let's give about 500 milliseconds for this transition to complete and we're going to use the ease in out easing method and let's see how this looks. Okay now when we click on this you can see that we have this nice animation of the side nav going in and out. Great. So outside of the side nav content, this seems to be fine. Now, what do we need to do inside of it? So let's go inside of the side nav and see exactly what to do. So to activate the animations inside of uh, the side nav content, whenever any of the properties here changes, all we need to do is to give a global sort of transitions to all properties. So let's add a style here. So we're going to use the host property here, which means that it's going to target that component and all of the elements inside of it. And we're going to use the wildcard character here. This means that it's going to apply this CSS property to all of the elements inside of this. So we're going to add a transition just like before. We're going to transition any property that we have 500 milliseconds and ease in out. Let's try this out. And now when we collapse this, you can see the image height and width are animating pretty nicely. The dashboard content just goes up nicely. And when you click on this, you can also see the slight change in the color is also animated, you know? So this looks good. Great. So this already looks really nice. But one thing that we need to add here is you can see that this header text is not exactly, you know, this, this is not exactly reducing in height as it did on the original YouTube studio sidebar. And that is because we are not animating the heights at all here. And you know, in CSS height auto cannot be animated. So we need to give a fixed height to the header text element here. And let's give it a height of three REM initially. Okay. And now the problem is that when it goes in the collapse state, the height remains the same. So what we are going to do is in the height header text, we add a height of zero pixels and we are going to make this important so that it overrides the height of the header text element. Great. Now let's see how this looks. Okay. Now you can see that the height of the element also changes and the elements go on top like this. Great. Okay, now what's left is you, you'll notice that in the original sidebar that I showed you in the final result, we had a side sort of border at the left side here. So let's add that border now. Now to add that border, we're going to add a class called selected menu item. Now this selected menu item will have basically a border left of five pixels and solid and the color we want this to be using the primary content color but here we're just going to give it a default color because we, i'm going to show you in a bit how to uh, conform this with the material theme so let's use red or let's say we can just give our own blue at this point okay so selected menu item is a class which we want to activate when the router link is active so this we can simply now use this notation router in active is equals to selected menu item and now let's see how this looks so you can see this nice border on the left side and now when you click on content you can see this great this looks good but the only problem is that the content basically shifts the menu item basically shifts which we don't want and it wasn't there in the original um, youtube sidebar so what we're going to do is that we're going to add a default sort of class here as well called menu item this menu item class is going to have this border left property all right but the color Color here would be transparent so it would be zero and zero so the alpha would be zero okay and the selected menu item is just going to change that color great now let's see how this now you can see all of the content all of the items are aligned to each other and when you click on this only the color of the left panel changes great we also want to do one thing and for the selected menu item we want to change the background to a slightest gray so that we have so that we know that it is selected so we're going to give a very slight blackish but a very high 
transparency so that it looks kind of gray and you can see how this looks now and when we click on this you can now see that it transforms nicely okay okay so we need to make one last tweak before we move on to the theming of the app and that tweak will be clear to you when we visit the youtube studio again so now when you see that uh, if you go in the original youtube studio menu you can see that the when the icons are not selected you can see those icons are of the outline state and the icon that has been selected is in the filled state and when you go to our youtube sidebar you can see that our icons are always in the filled state now material icons come in different font sets and there is an outline font set the default is the filled on set which uh, means that the icons will have colored filled in now how do we switch between those when we are selected and when we are not selected so first of all we need to go in our index.html and see what icons we are importing so you can see there's a link tag here which is importing the font family material icons here that means it's the filled set icons now we also need to include the outline icons if you want to use that style so how do we do that to do that we can simply add the material icons outline right after the material icons here now this is going to import both the material icon the filled ones and the outline ones so that we can switch between them when the menu item is selected or not okay let's save this now we need to switch between them now how do we switch between them so we can use the font set property of the material icons here are the material icons you can see so here we need to switch between them now let's use the font set property here and now how do we tell which root is active so we are going to use the same thing rla dot is active now when the root is active we want to use the filled state which will be material icons and when it is not active we will be using the material icons outlined okay let's try this out great now you can see all of the other icons are outlined and the selected one is filled now when we click on this you can see this switches between that so it gives that nice feel to it and it is more closer to that YouTube sidebar. Great. So this was the last week that we needed. And now we are going to move on to theming the app. Now for theming the app, we need to have a custom theme uh, because currently what we're using is a pre-built theme called Indigo Pink, which is a default theme that we use for um, Angular Material uh, installations initially. And it has that indigo color or a close to blue color uh, as a primary color. Now what do we, uh, what we need is that YouTube specific color, just like we have in our youtube uh, menu bar so how to do that now we are going to add those to the styles.sass file and what we are going to do we are not going to only add a material a custom material theme but we are also going to add a css variable to specify the primary color why do we why are we doing that because we need to use that css variable to set our left border color as well because that is not going to be updated by the material theming so the material theming is going to apply to all of the material components including this matte list item that we are using but it's not going to apply to any custom elements so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to add a CSS variable here called primary color and we can give this value CC0000 and yes you can see it has that red look and then after that we are going to add some boilerplate code which we use to add a custom theme to um, angular material so we are going to first import angular material as matte and include matte.core at the top here then below that we are going to copy some themes built out of that same color so let me just copy all of this in okay so you can see we have our um, primary theme here matte primary palette here in fact and it has that same color um, which is a youtube color and then it has a lighter darker and other shades that's needed to create the palette and then it has some contrasting colors as well that i have added okay so we are defining the primary theme here using that palette and then we are defining the accent theme here which is basically using a blue color or the indigo color which is the primary theme currently at, at this point and then we are just defining our theme here using the primary and the accent colors and then lastly we are exporting or sort of including this theme in all of our components so it is going to apply to all of our material components automatically here great so let's try this out great now you can see that our material list has changed color so that shows the list color really nice just like we want but what do we do for that color of the left um, border and so we can go in custom side nav component here and we can use the css variable to set the primary color that we have set so the border left color was blue at this point we can use 
the primary color here. So this is the benefit of using a CSS variable that you can use it throughout your app and it is and it is sort of the perfect way to handle you know uh, app wide theming of the different colors. Great. So now you can see that we have our perfect look complete here. And now if you want to change this theming you can just go in styles.sass file and you can just change the primary color and then change the colors here as well and you can then use that same color throughout the app. Great. So this marks the end of our tutorial here and you can see our final result has been achieved now. And I hope you like this three part series on creating this YouTube style uh, sidebar in Angular using the Angular material components and you will use it to the full in your own apps and make them great. If you're more interested for just for the code for this, you can get it in the description below. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe to my channel as I'm going to be bringing you more such tutorials like this on a regular basis. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.